All right, in this video, we're going to talk about what it means to find a geometric mean, and then we're going to apply it to some similar right triangles inside some geometric figures. It's kind of complicated. When we get there, you'll see I'm going to do a ton of examples to help hopefully clarify it for you. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, when we say geometric mean, we're not talking about, you know, the arithmetic mean. We're not just going to take the average of these two numbers. That would be the arithmetic mean. That's the mean that we've been, you know, averaging for years and years and years. What we're going to do instead is find this new thing called the geometric mean, which means it's set up a proportion, set two fractions equal to each other. The geometric mean we're going to let equal to x, and we're going to put x and x bottom left, top right. We're going to put 5 and 45 in the other blank sections. And we're just going to cross multiply. x squared is, let's see, 225. And we'll take the uh, principal square root and we get 15. So the geometric mean of 5 and 45 is actually 15. We're going to use this idea in some geometry today. And here's the theorem out of the textbook. As you can see, it's pretty complicated looking. I'm not going to you know, ask that you write this down. You certainly can pause it and write this down if you want to. They're not that hard to uh, sort of decipher, but uh, I, I tend to think sometimes these, when these theorems are written this way, they can be a little bit confusing. They use a lot of sort of just flowery language and unnecessary. They, they make it unnecessarily difficult. So let's try to simplify this thing. You do notice that in all three sort of examples here, they're using proportions. So that's got to be pretty important. Let's learn by example here. We've got this scenario where we're, we're definitely dealing with a right angle up there. You have to have that. And you have to have this altitude right here, which of course connects the, to the base at 90 degrees as well. So if you don't have those two things, you can't do this theorem. But since we do, here's what the theorem says. If we're looking for that value, what you want to do is set x and x, so that's your altitude, put it in bottom left, top right, and then put 6 and 3 in the other slots. Cross multiply, you get the answer as the square root of 18. So the square root of 18 will go, and we're not going to find the negative square root. I just want the principal one, the positive one, because we're dealing in actual lengths here, 4.243. And we're going to use a lot of decimals today, so hopefully you're okay with that. Now, what this also does, and I'm not really going to talk about this too much in this video. This also sets up some similarity here. Uh, there are some other great videos online for this, but the three triangles you see, which are you know, this one, that's sort of the biggest one, and then you see you know, this one in here. If you spin that around and kind of make it look like the other ones, and you see this one over here as well. If you kind of spin that one around and maybe flip it, that one is like this, right? Those three triangles are all similar to each other. So their sides are in proportion and their angles are all equal to each other. That's pretty important. That's kind of like a whole nother video though. We're not going to really talk too much about the similarity of the triangles. Uh, you can, this sort of comes from all the similarity. That's where it's sort of derived from. But for our purposes, I don't really have time to go through all that stuff. Uh, maybe in a different video, I'll speak purely about the uh, similarity of the triangles and see how to work with that. In fact, at the end, I'm going to give you some examples to work with, a uh, few of which uh, have the similarity. So here's number two. Again, we have an altitude. So in the last one, that was x, but this one, it's a number. So I'll put that number bottom left, top right. And I'm going to put x and 5 in the other slots. So now we have cross multiplication. 5x is... 81. So if we divide that, I think we get like 60, 16 rather, 16.2. 5 times 10 is 50, plus 30, plus another. Uh, yeah, that should work. 
16.2 and we're done you know if you wanted to plug that back in here and kind of check it you can do that you know 16.2 times 5 is 81 all right this one is a little different this one's a little different so this time we don't have an altitude I don't have that nor do I want to find it so this problem has a different this is going to use one of those other those other versions of the proportion so in this case we're looking for this guy over here so he's going to go bottom left top right and we're going to use four and we're not going to use 12, but we're going to use the whole thing. So you kind of have to memorize that, I think. The best way to do that is just to memorize it. If we're looking for one of the sides here, one of the legs of our overall right triangle, or if you want to think about it like this, it's the hypotenuse of one of the side triangles, you have to use the different version of this theorem. So the x goes bottom left, top right. We use the number that's closest to what we're looking for. So we use 4 and then we use the overall big hypotenuse which is 16. Just add those together. So you get x squared is, let's see, 40 is 64, so x is 8. x is 8. Number 4. Let's go to the other side. Now we're dealing over here. So again, we don't have any altitudes nor do we care about them. We're looking for x, so we're going to use x and x, bottom left, top right. 16 is the number that's closest, and then we want to use the whole bottom base, 25. So x squared is equal to 16 times 25. Let's go to the calculator. 16 times 25 is 400. The square root of that is 20. Number five. At this point, it might be a good idea to pause and see if you can do some of these on your own. Again, I have no interest in whatever this altitude is. It's not really part of the problem. So this time I'm simply looking for the length of segment AB. So let's call that X. So we go proportion. In the previous problems, this was our unknown. And we put that bottom left, top right. We'll do the same thing. It's just the number this time. We're going to use the number that's closest to it, which is 24. And then we're going to use the whole segment AB. So 24x is equal to 30 times 30. So divide that 900 divided by 24. 37 and a half. That's what segment AB is equal to. If you were required to figure out this distance right here, you would take 37 and a half and you would subtract 24 from it. Let's move on. And by the way, from there, if, if you ever needed to find like this altitude, you can certainly do that. I mean, think about it. We're still, we still have Pythagorean theorem to work with. We have this right triangle right in here. All right, that thing is still existing as a right triangle, which means Pythagorean theorem works. Over here, you can use Pythagorean theorem. Over the entire right triangle, you can use Pythagorean theorem as well. So there's a lot of Pythagorean theorem going on. Number six. In number six, we're asked to find the length of segment AD. Let's call it X. In this one, we don't have any altitudes, nor do we care about them. So we have to use the side version of this theorem. 1660 goes right there. The number that's closest to it goes right here, and then the whole thing goes right here. So 68x is equal to 60 squared. So let's divide 3600 by 68. 52.942 and there you go again if you wanted to find this thing you would just subtract 68 minus that answer and if you wanted to find this now you can do that with Pythagorean theorem uh, and for the record I might as well mention if this is easy to find 
if you think about the triangle as the big triangle as right this is 60 this is 68 and this is let's say B you know all I'm doing there is using the whole triangle the right triangle because I've got this right angle up here so I can use Pythagorean theorem there to find that those are the examples let's practice a few <clears throat> fill in these blanks pause it see if you can do it in a minute I'll fill in the blanks for you and I'll also give you the actual answers to the problems alright so we have let's see an altitude so the altitude goes here and here when we use the altitude version you use just these two separately you don't add them together when, we have, when we're off to the side here that goes here and here now we're using seven but we're not using three That's a common mistake you're using ten ten is the whole segment down here again off to the right hand side this time use the one that's closest to it and then the whole segment 40 plus 26 Answers to those if you wanted to solve them. Pause it now. I'm going to press, when you press play, you'll see the answers on the screen. There you go. All right, so that's it, really. You know, if you want to keep watching this, I'm going to put up some extra pro uh, practice problems for you. Uh, they're totally optional. If, you're, if you kind of struggle with this video and you think that you need uh, some more practice, keep watching. If you did pretty well, you know. You can certainly move on to the next video, but uh, these are some extra problems for you to practice. Some of these involve some similarity. Some of them involve just some basic stuff. Now you can see this one has a little binomial in it. This one has a bunch of different letters, three different letters. Uh, so I would probably start right here and maybe then go down to like this one. But anyway, pause it and see if you can try some of these. See if you can get the answers. I'm not going to go through how to do all these. Uh, but I am going to put the answers up in a second. So press pause now. And there are your answers. Press pause, check your work, see if you got them. If not, you know, go back, check through the stuff that I talked about above. And uh, if you have any big questions, just uh, ask them in the comment section. I'll get back to you. So there you go. There was the theorem that you know, I'm not really sure the official name of it, but I call it the geometric mean altitude theorem. There are a couple different versions of it. Uh, hopefully this made some sense to you. If not, you know, maybe I can clarify, especially a lot of those extra practice examples at the bottom at a, at a later time in a different video. But uh, thanks for watching, and uh, make sure you subscribe.